Thank you very much. It is now time for question period. The member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of order um, on overdue order paper questions. On October the 21st, I made several inquiries to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, including questions on relief funding for the ice storm in December 2013 and the Ontario Disaster Relief Assistance Program. Mr. Speaker, I have not received a response to any of these questions. I am shocked. Thank you. I, uh, I'd appreciate an opportunity to make my ruling. That is a point of order, and I would defer to the government house leader that uh, I understand it is overdue and what steps would be taken to have those answers replied to. Thank you. Further, the member from Perth Wellington on a point of order. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Speaker, Speaker, I'd like to bring uh, uh, this to the minister's attention of an overdue uh, a question that hasn't been answered. It's, it's uh, to the uh, uh, Minister of Transportation. Would he please clarify the government's? I apologize to the House. I was under the impression that the person that was standing was starting question period because I did invite the first question, and because of such that they were points of order, I'm going to ask the clock to be reset, and I'll deal with the points of order. So the member from Perth Wellington, quickly, please. I would like to uh, bring this to the attention of uh, the Ministry of Transportation. The question was, it's an overdue question, would the Minister of Transportation please clarify the government's policy on extending ghost transit service to Stratford, confirming or denying the Premier's intention to make— Okay, um, and, and I will also make this. If there are any furthers, I will deal with them after question period because the time is allotted for question period during this particular time frame. So I will defer to the House Leader again that if this is an unanswered question, if it's time past time, uh, it will be dealt with as quickly and exped exponentially as possible. You, I will get that. Thank you. And uh, it is now time for question period. Yesterday's Auditor General's report revealed the incompetence of your Liberal government has reached new heights. $2 billion wasted on so-called smart meters, project costs nearly double the original estimate, and hard-working Ontarians left to pay the bill. A debt ballooning to $325 billion will mean a burden of $23,000 for every child born in 2018. There's one word that keeps coming up over and over again in this report, Premier and that's failure. A failure to manage money, a failure to manage projects, a failure to manage people, a failure to take care of our most vulnerable, and a complete failure of leadership. Premier, when will you stop failing Ontarians and get your fiscal house in order? Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And as I have said, as I said in the House yesterday and as I said this morning, uh, we welcome the scrutiny of the Auditor General. As, uh, as governments before us have. Stop the um, the, mem the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs will come to order. Now, I anticipate, I shouldn't, but I anticipate that this will be emotional. And if it gets too emotional, I'm going to shut it down. And that includes anyone making any comments at all. Let's get through this properly. Premier, please finish. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Speaker, as I said, we welcome the scrutiny of the Auditor General. We, we welcome the opportunity to improve services. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, Bill 8, which passed yesterday, actually increases the accountability of the government, Mr. Speaker. And so we, we have worked with the Auditor General. We will continue to work with the Auditor General. Many of the recommendations that the Auditor General made, Mr. Speaker, many of the areas of concern are areas where we have already taken action, whether it's childcare, uh, the review of the Immunization system, Mr. Speaker, the Adult Corrections, uh, Adult Community Corrections, and Ontario Parole Board. Many of those are areas where we have already taken action, Mr. Speaker. Answer. On the air, other areas of concern, we will continue to work with the Auditor General. 
Thank you, Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, the disrespect for taxpayers' dollars from this government is nothing short of appalling. President Premier, Obama. we thought we'd seen it all when we saw a billion dollars lost in the gas plant scandal. Now we learn that you and your reappointed energy minister have doubled down by wasting two billion more dollars on smart meters that don't work. The two billion dollars in costs have raised the energy prices on families and seniors who now can't even afford to turn on a space heater. There's nothing smart about wasting two billion dollars and getting no results. Is anyone in your government willing to stand up and be held accountable for this abject failure of management in the ocean? I, said, I have said and I will continue to say that there are many areas in the majority Member of the government has made are things that we agree with and we are completely aligned and will work with her, or we have already started to work to make those improvements. But Mr. Speaker, there are a couple of areas. The member from Dufferin, Caledon, come to order. The member from uh, Stormont, Dundas, and South Bend, Gary, come to order. Your names are on a list. Areas, Mr. Speaker, where there is a disagreement, and uh, I will address the issue of smart meters. If the member opposite had the opportunity yesterday to hear the head of Toronto Hydro speak, she will recognize that there is concrete success that we can see on the ground. Three percent of Toronto Hydro off-peak uh, in off-peak hours has been has been shifted Answer. from off-peak, Mr. Speaker, to save the equivalent of the power to to uh, fuel 97 Thank condominium you. buildings, Mr. Speaker. That's a serious reduction. Thank you. Final supplementary. You can't get away from this smart meter fiasco. Billions wasted on scandal, billions in t foregone tax revenues from jobs you've driven out of this province, not to mention the $11 billion we spend servicing our debt. All of that could be redirected to schools, to hospitals, to those with disabilities, to paying down our debt. But instead, all that money goes to pay for your scandals in an ineptitude. Premier, these scandals have to stop. Will you show Ontarians the respect they deserve and demand your energy minister resign? Yeah. Yeah. Member from Huron Bruce, come to order. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and just to, to the issue of smart meters, let me just let me just relay to the member opposite what some of the people who are experts in the field have said about the smart meters, Mr. Speaker. The Environmental Commissioner of Ontario. The member from Renfrew. They are necessary, order. absolutely necessary, for the proper functioning and future functioning of the distribution system for electricity. Smart grid technologies have the potential to improve reliability, reduce system costs, empower customers, and lower the environmental impact impact of the electricity that we use. Mr. Speaker, the reality is we have data because of the smart meters that are in place that we would Remember not have Chatham, otherwise. We are able to implement conservation mechanisms that we would not be able to implement without smart meters. Now, I know, Mr. Speaker, that the member opposite is not particularly interested in conservation, but the fact is that we are Start the clock, please. No question. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Again, to the Premier. Yesterday, I watched the Minister of Energy try to defend the indefensible. Rather than accept the Auditor General's indictment of his tenure as Minister of Energy, we watched the Minister attack an independent and impartial officer of our Legislature. He accused her of getting her facts wrong and being in over her head. 
his disrespect showed just how out of touch with reality this minister is. Premier, yesterday you said, and you said again today, that your government welcomes accountability. Will you live up to those words and show your energy minister Fire! the door? What the member opposite saw yesterday was a, a couple of ministers of this government making sure that people understand where we are aligned with the Auditor General and where, Mr. Speaker, there are some differences. And I think if the member opposite looks back to 2002 and some comments by a, a former minister of her party, she will see that there are times when Ministers and governments disagree with Member some of the recommendations and some of the concerns of the Auditor General. That is not that is not an unheard of circumstance, Mr. Speaker. But the, what the member opposite also should have heard is experts in the electricity field making it clear what smart meters are doing, Mr. Speaker, how they are helping us gather data that will allow us to conserve and will also allow us are already Answer. allowing us to gather data on residential usage on commercial usage mr speaker that will allow us to conserve into the future the saddest part of the ag's report is the devastating human cost attached to this government's reckless management from patients to pensioners to families with children to businesses and job creators to our most vulnerable Chief citizens, minister of health and long term care all have been failed by this government on so many fronts. Premier, it's about priorities. You don't spend $2 billion on not-so-smart meters when people nearing the end of their lives can't get the hospice and palliative care services they deserve. Right. You don't spend $2 billion on a program that doesn't work when developmentally challenged adults are in crisis and are waiting years for residential placements. Premier, when to serve economic you development come to order. massive human cost attached to your government's yeah, incompetence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Mr. Speaker, there's a there's a massive human cost to us not conserving energy. There's a massive human cost to not having access to information. Anthony Haynes yesterday, the head of Toronto Hydro. Thank you. Carry on. Haynes yesterday, the uh, head of, uh, of Toronto Hydro, commented that during the ice storm last year, uh, Toronto Hydro was able to identify people who were medically fragile, who were at risk Leader because the they had smart meters. They were able to identify where those people were, whether they had power, and move to address those concerns. So, Mr. Speaker, smart meters are, gab are helping us Prince to gather Silver data Hastings that is extremely order. necessary. But on the general issue of the Auditor General, Mr. Speaker, we have worked closely with her. We will continue to work closely with her. There are many, many areas of yes, agreement sir. where we have already started to uh, implement the changes that she recommends, or we will do that, Mr. Speaker. There are a few areas where Thank there you. are discrepancies, and we will continue to work with Thank her. You. New question. Leader of the third party. Uh, speaker. Lost count. Final supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Obviously, you can tell by these responses that things have to change. Yesterday's report showed a complete policy failure, a failure to respect Ontario taxpayers, and a failure to take care of our most vulnerable citizens. The callous response from the Energy Minister cannot stand. Premier, signal to Ontarians that you truly believe in accountability, that you believe in priorities, that you recognize the human cost of your policies, and fire your energy minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I reject the premise of the comment and the question, Mr. Speaker. We are working extremely hard to make sure that we do exactly that, to take Second the actions time. that we know are in the best interest of the people of this province, Mr. Speaker. As I have said, it is not unprecedented that there would be some small area of disagreement between the government and the, uh, the Auditor General. And Mr. Speaker, I'm fairly certain that in 2002, Minister Bob Runciman did not lose his job, and Minister Bob Runciman at that point said, and I quote, the Auditor's report is misleading and inaccurate. That's what the member said in 2002. 
to, Mr. Speaker. The reality is it is extremely important that when there is a disagreement or when there is alignment or agreement, we are clear about that and we're clear about what our actions are yes, to make sure that we conserve energy, Mr. Speaker, that we gather information about immunization, that we make sure child Thank care you. is safe. All of those are the work that we're doing right now. Just the clock, please. You say it, please. You say it, please. Thank you. No question. Leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Yesterday, the Minister of Energy attacked the Independent Auditor General of Ontario. Frankly, Speaker, I have never seen anything like this since I was elected to this legislature. Deputy House Leader, the Deputy Minister Order. said, and I quote, the electricity system is very complex. It's very difficult to understand, unquote. And he said that the auditor, quote, didn't understand the issues. Speaker, not only is that patronizing, but that is sexist. The Premier and her minister should know that Bonnie. The Deputy House Leader will come to order. The member from the P and Carleton will come to order. The member from Hamilton East Stony Creek will come to order. That's two for the Deputy House Leader, two for the member from P and Carleton. Sorry, one. I, I have a list. I can't. No, you're not. Please finish. The Premier and her minister should know that Bonnie Lissick spent 10 years at Manitoba Hydro. Will this, premier, will this Premier do the right thing and fire her Minister of Energy for his shameful Question. behavior towards an independent officer of this legislature? You see it, please? You see it, please? Premier? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, um, let me just say that the, uh, the Auditor General of Ontario is a professional. She is perfectly capable of, a, of engaging with the government on any of the issues that she has an opinion on, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Energy has uh, worked, and his ministry has worked closely with the, uh, the Auditor General. We have a Number great from respect will come to order. for her and for the office and for the work that she has done, Mr. Speaker. And the vast majority of the recommendations and the concerns that she has raised, we are aligned with, we are working on, or we were already working on before she wrote a report, Mr. Speaker. The fact is that it is not unprecedented for there to be some narrow area of disagreement in terms of the report of the Auditor General. The fact is that the numbers and the uh, commentary yes, about smart meters in the report were not signed off on by energy officials, Mr. Speaker, in the ministry, and so we will continue to work Thank with you. the Auditor General until we get those final reports. Speaker, smart meters have not brought down consumption, and instead of going down, bills are just going up. The minister wasted $1.9 billion on smart meters that are not smart. But instead of taking responsibility, he shoots the messenger by attacking the auditor. The Liberals need to start taking responsibility, Speaker, for their incompetence. Will the Premier tell her? Incompetent minister, that his job is over and fire that minister. Of you see this, please? You see this, please? Thank you. 
Premier. Mr. Speaker, and I know the Minister of Energy is very eager to speak to some of the specifics in the supplementary, but let me let me just address the issue of what smart meters have done or have not done. Anthony Haynes, who's the president and CEO of Toronto Hydro, after the uh, press conference that the AG did yesterday, said this. We've seen about a 3% shift off the peak here in the City of Toronto. 3% is 97 condominium buildings, 97 condominium buildings that came on the grid over the same period of time. We didn't have to make any additional capital investment because that shift of that 3% provided the capacity within our grid. I often get the, asked the question, my goodness, with all these condominiums going up, your grid must be absolutely stretched beyond belief. But in fact, the time of use programs have allowed for that capacity to be there. Mr. Answer. Speaker, the smart meters have allowed for that. They have allowed for that degree of conservation, and that is happening all over the Thank province. You. They are working, Mr. Speaker. The Liberals wasted $2 billion on smart meters, but instead of taking any responsibility, the Minister just denied the facts put forward by the Auditor General, and the Premier is just doing it again. The Auditor General is an independent officer. It is her job to give Ontarians the straight facts without politics. But instead of listening to the auditor, the Minister of Energy attacked her competence, and Liberal ministers have been taking to Twitter to support that disgraceful attack. Speaker, I was astounded by the Premier's press conference this morning, where she actually defended his behaviour as well. How can this Premier, how can this Premier, the first woman Premier of this province elected, not only support, but pile on to this Question. minister's arrogant and sexist behaviour? Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Minister of Energy. Mr. Speaker, um, one, one of the uh, quotes from the auditor's report uh, states that smart meters have not been achieved. The benefits of smart meters have not been achieved, Mr. Speaker. And I have some third-party validation for the fact ah. that they have been achieved. Ah. The Environmental Commissioner of Ontario stated, smart meters are a shrewd investment that will benefit both individual consumers of power and society as a whole. They are necessary, absolutely necessary, for the proper functioning and future functioning of the distribution system for electricity. Mr. Speaker, Brian Bent, CEO of PowerStream, representing Aurora, Barry, Markham and Vaughan. Ontario is seen as a world leader in smart meter implementation. Mr. Speaker, Don McCabe, Vice President of Ontario Federation of Agriculture. Remember from Brent the time of use order, structure, time. All customers Answer. will pay closer to the actual cost for the power they use. Advantages for Excuse me. The member from Renfrew Nicosine Pembroke is warned. Uh, my next question is for the Premier. For years, the Liberals have insisted, Speaker, that smart meters would reduce consumption and save people money and cost about a billion dollars. None of this is true, Speaker. None of it. They haven't reduced consumption. People are paying more. And the Liberals spent $2 billion, not $1 billion, on smart meters. This incompetence is obvious. It is incompetence, plain and simple, no matter how you cut it, Speaker. And Ontarians expect and deserve much better. If the Premier won't fire her minister for incompetence, will she at least fire him uh, for his arrogance? Minister of Energy. Well, Mr. Speaker, let me just. Uh, let Excuse me. It was the Minister of Energy? No. No, no, this is her. Fine. Sorry. This, this, this is your new question. Yeah, I'm taking Sorry. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Mr. Speaker, let me just go to, uh, to the, uh, the substance of the question around the smart meters because, as I have said, the, uh, the smart meters actually are having the effect that uh, we were looking for, and that is they are reducing consumption. Otherwise, the head of Toronto Hydro wouldn't be talking about 3% of power moving off-grid, Mr. Speaker. He wouldn't be talking about the capacity having been increased in the City of Toronto because of smart meters. The fact is that 
independent, uh, independent, impartial officers of the legislature actually disagree. We've got we've got the environmental commissioner supporting and and saying that the uh, smart meters are a very important aspect of the uh, the system, Mr. Speaker, and uh, and we've got the auditor general who has a different opinion. So there is a disagreement, Mr. Speaker. We understand that. We will continue to work with the auditor general. Answer. We will make it very clear, very clear what the costs actually are because so far estimates have only been. Thank you. Stop the clock. Right, uh, just, just before you start, I just want to remind the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke that he was warned, and I, I, I may have been hasty with that, but if he decides to say another thing, he will be named. Carry on. There is nothing smart about smart meters. They went 100% over budget. They haven't brought down bills. In fact, the auditor says ratepayers are paying significantly more, and at, at, at off-street prices are up more than 100%. Smart meters haven't saved energy, Speaker. In fact, the auditor says reductions, quote, have not yet been achieved. Smart meters simply are not doing their job. But in spite of that, the minister still has his job. Why won't the premier give her minister of energy his walking papers and do right by the people of Ontario? <laughs> minister of energy. Mr. Speaker, in 2013, the Ontario Energy Board commissioned a study by the Expert from Energy Bruce Research Gray, Owen Sound and Order. that showed commodity costs per customer are estimated to be approximately $12 per year lower because of load shifting and conservation driven by smart meter-enabled time of use pricing. Mr. Speaker, over three years, over three years, that represents approximately $150 million in savings, which have not been accounted for by the Auditor General. What's more, an estimated 3.3 per cent reduction, the same number that Mr. Haynes used from uh, Toronto Hydro, in residential summer consumption was attributed to smart meter policies. Smart meters represent an ongoing platform for which new applications are being added almost on a monthly yes, basis. Sir. And one of the expanding uses of smart meters is a wide range of already in service conservation and demand management initiatives, which are enabled by smart meters, suppressing Thank the you. cost of electricity. Speaker, since the Liberals were elected, they have staggered Remember from, from one energy boondoggle to another. Hydro bills have gone up by more than 300 per cent. They cancelled two gas plants and wasted $1.1 billion. And they overspent on their smart uh, meter program by a billion dollars. The Liberal track record, frankly, Speaker, is absolutely abysmal in the energy file. But no Liberal ever pays the price, Speaker. Will the Premier hold someone responsible, finally, for once, and fire her Minister of Energy? Mr. Speaker, that Leader of the Opposition has voted for every price mitigation measure that was brought before this House, including in the budget that was brought forward first in May, then the actual budget, wherein we're removing the debt retirement charge, a legacy tax from the Harris government, two years earlier than planned, saving the average family $70 per year on hydro bills. The Ontario Energy Board is working on an OESP which is an Ontario Electricity Support Program, which is in our budget, Mr. Speaker, which will save them an additional $180 off their bills. That leader of the opposition, third party, Mr. Speaker, Answer. voted against those provisions to mitigate rates for low and modest income people. Shame on her, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member from Timmins, James Bay, will come to order, and the leader of the third party will withdraw. Withdraw, Speaker, and I think the minister. I, uh, I'm here. Please stand. Withdraw only. Speaker. No question. Speaker. Member from the P and Carlton. Is also to the premier. This has to.
to be the morning after the worst day in the history of your government. Yesterday, I say this because it was the worst and most scathing Auditor General's report I have seen in my four terms at Queen's Park. The Auditor confirmed that debt will cripple our government. Smart meters have increased bills for seniors and small business owners and families. Procurement po policies have hosed taxpayers. But above all, since 2009, since you were the Minister of Education, this government has radically reduced inspections into licensed childcare facilities in Ontario, putting 29,000 of Ontario's children at risk. There is no Harper or Harris to blame anymore. Question. It's all with you. Will you scrap Bill 10 and put more enforcement into the regulatory regime for our children's child care, Thank or you. will you continue on this path of putting our children in? Thank you. Minister of Education. Yeah. Minister of Education. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, in terms of uh, the accusation that you're making, I think it's really important to understand that Bill 10 is actually what allows us to fix some of the problems. However, with respect to uh, the backlog in inspections, and we are doing the inspections, we have actually added inspectors and we've already cut the backlog in half. With the assistance of Bill 10, we'll actually be legally able to move to a risk-based inspection system. But we've also been able to introduce a uh, dedicated team of enforcement officers who are dealing with complaints against the home care, unlicensed home care sector, which means Answer. that there is an enforcement unit that is doing that work, again freeing up time for inspectors to deal with licensing. Thank you. That's not adequate at all. We all know what this really is. It's a move to universal child care, and we already know that Mr. this government has, fought, has failed in its uh, four mandates in order to protect children Culture in licensed and child care settings. Today, there shouldn't just be one minister who should be asked to resign or who should be fired. There are actually three. It's the Minister of Energy, the Minister of Economic Development, and now the Minister of Education for continued negligence under Bill 10. We now know both the Auditor General and the Ombudsman. Order. Minister of Government and so, services, please come to order. And the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, please come to order. No, you are. Please. Back to the Premier. This isn't just about education. It's about failure in energy, failure in public procurement. It's about failure in education. This is a government that has gotten it wrong, and they Question. need to have some accountability. And their bill that they passed through, uh, through the House the other day isn't going to cut it. So I ask her again, will you ensure that Bill 10 is repealed and that you ensure our children's safety by having more inspectors in, in licensed child care settings and allowing those that are, uh, that are right now unlicensed to Associate regulate Minister themselves? Of Health, yes or no? Care. The member from Trinity Spadina come to order. Minister. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I'm not surprised that the member opposite wants Bill 10 repealed. They voted against it because they thought we should delete all the in new enforcement uh, methods that are in it. They wanted us to delete them. We believe that we actually should have Bill 10 and have the enforcement tools to ensure that all forms of child care, be they licensed child care centres, licensed home care or unlicensed home care, we want them all to be safe. You know, another thing that Bill 10 allows us to do is it actually allows us to carry out another of the auditor's recommendations. We will be able, with Bill 10, to require a vulnerable sector criminal reference check, which we have not been able to do previously. So, with Bill 10, we have greater capacity Answer. to make sure that our children are safe, no matter what form of child care the parent chooses. Thank you. No question. The of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is for the Premier. Let's look at the front bench of the Liberal government. Orange Air Ambulance wasted millions and put Ontarians at risk. 
but that minister got a promotion. Yeah. Mars is a boondoggle, and the costs keep going up, and now we see $8 billion wasted on P3s that are nothing but sweetheart deals for Liberal friends, but that minister is still sitting on the front bench. The Liberals wasted $1.1 billion on gas plants, and not a single Liberal lost their job. And $2 billion has been wasted on smart meters and that don't reduce consumption or bills. That's $10 billion, Speaker. That's almost our entire deficit right there. But no one has taken responsibility and no one has Question. paid the price. Is this Premier so arrogant and irresponsible that she thinks her pr front bench can waste billions, fail Ontarians, and never be held accountable? Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, so, in terms of accountability, I, I have to say I was very, very surprised because we are talking about accountability of government and scrutiny on government. I was very surprised to see the NDP not support, yeah. vote against Bill 8, Mr. Speaker. This is a party that goes on and on and on about the need to expand the scrutiny on government, and so I would have thought that they would have voted for Bill 8. Mr. Speaker, on the issues of building transit and transportation infrastructure, which is what the, uh, one of the things the leader of the third party is talking about, on the issue of conservation, Mr. Speaker, which is what smart meters are a part of, we are doing everything in our power, Mr. Speaker, to make sure we Answer. build the infrastructure that's needed. I was at the Up Express announcement today, Mr. Speaker. That's a piece of infrastructure that has been built, has been possible because of our procurement. Thank you. Supplementary. Sweet cheese Liberal legislation is exactly why this province is in the mess that it's in, and we're proud not to support that. Being a Liberal minister is just about the safest job in Ontario. The Liberals are cutting health care, but the minister just denies the facts. The Liberals are cutting schools, but the minister just denies the facts. The Liberals are not inspecting long-term care homes, but the minister just denies the facts. The Liberals wasted $2 billion on smart meters that didn't do their job, but the minister just denies the facts. The Liberals wasted $8 billion on P3s that are just sweetheart deals for insiders, but the minister just denies the facts. The Liberals waste over a billion dollars on gas plants and delete the evidence, and not a single Liberal Question. faces uh, their job loss. Just how many chances does a Liberal minister get, Speaker, before the— I would ask during the round of questions that the member from Trinity, Spadina and Barrie do not engage in a conversation with the member from Hamilton, East Stony Creek, which means the three of you have been warned. You just don't believe what it looks like from here. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, not one of us on this side of the House denies the facts and denies the complexity of the issues that we're tackling, Mr. Speaker. We do not deny that it is a challenge right now for Ontario that we have to build infrastructure, we have to build transit, transportation infrastructure, roads and bridges across the province, Mr. Speaker, and that we need to do that in a way that allows the, the uh, private sector to work with us because government doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the project management capacity to actually do all of that building. So we are doing it in a way that allows those projects to get built, whether it's hospitals or schools or transit projects, Mr. Speaker. We don't deny the fact that there's complexity involved in gathering immunization information, Mr. Speaker, or implementing electronic health records, Mr. Speaker. All of those things are complex, yes, and I actually, I actually would welcome an exchange of ideas across the floor that acknowledged that complexity and didn't— Thank you. Can you say that, please? 
New question. Member from Alton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Great Minister. Minister, the pork industry is an important part of our diverse agricultural industry here in Ontario, made up of family farms dedicated to producing safe, nutritious pork. This industry contributes over $5.6 billion to the provincial economy. Minister, my riding of Halton is home to a large agribusiness sector that is a key pillar of our local economy, and our farmers are responsible for providing residents, both inside and outside of the riding, with a wide variety of local, fresh and delicious food, and pork is a key product. When it comes to local food, Ontario pork is definitely a fan favourite, with 7 out of 10 consumers regularly Question. buying pork in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please inform the House on how our government is helping the pork industry adapt to the challenges faced today while evolving Thank to you. meet the pressing needs of tomorrow? The member of, the member of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thanks uh, very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member from Halton for the question and question. her commitment to the agricultural sector and the wonderful riding of Halton. Our government's support for Ontario pork producers is clear since 2010. We supported research and development on innovative insurance products for the province's hog sector. We increased the sector's ability to execute emergency responses. We've been expanding Ontario pork bread at retail and food service. We commenced an industry-wide enhancement to biosecurity across the province, including a special intake under Growing Forward 2 to assist with PED's impact earlier this year and to mitigate this disease as we head into the fall or winter representing about $9 million, Mr. Speaker, in funding. My ministry has and will continue to work with our industry partners, ensuring the vitality of Ontario's pork industry. And, Mr. Speaker, Answer. in the spirit of the season, members should enjoy an Ontario ham with an Ontario turkey at this Christmas here, season. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for his answer. Ontario's pork industry is resilient, having faced challenges like PED and Russian sanctions, and time and time again, they come out strongly. In addition, our government's swift response to PED has empowered producers and industry partners to carry out a dedicated and systemic uh, approach to biosecurity that is unequaled across North America. From small family farms to major operations, 25 500 pork producing farms contribute over $1 billion to Ontario's farm cash receipts, helping to build a strong, successful agri food sector in Ontario. Minister, last year, Premier Wynne issued the Agri Food Growth Challenge and called on the sector to double its rate of growth and create 120,000 new jobs. Considering my riding of Halton's vast agri-food industry, Mr. Speaker, can the minister please inform the House on how our government is working with the pork industry Thank to you. help it meet the Premier's challenge moving forward? Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the uh, member for the supplementary. It's a big goal, but every day I see farmers, including those in the pork industry, embracing that challenge. I can tell you that we're happy to support Ontario's pork branding and, and marketing to help meet that challenge. Just recently, I announced that our government is providing Ontario pork with up to $2 billion to help marketing efforts. These funds support a campaign that encourages more people to choose Ontario pork where they shop, whether it's at a butcher shop, a grocery store, restaurants, or farmer's market. Mr. Speaker, Ontarians are happy when they can access delicious local food. Our farmers are happy when their demand for their product increases. Working together, with Ontario's pork producers, our government is strengthening Ontario's agri-food sector and ensuring that all Answer. Ontarians have access to excellent locally produced food, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Question? A member from Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Energy. Minister, yesterday when you were pressed by the reporters on why the public should accept your numbers while rejecting those of the Auditor General, you shamelessly said, and I quote, I'm not going to have a further debate on these details in public. Well, Minister, I've got news for you. When you blow a billion dollars, you're accountable to the public and you'll be asked questions in public. The Auditor General stands by her numbers. We, the opposition, the press and the public stand by her numbers. We all know you blew a bit $1.9 billion on smart meters. Will you rise in your place, retract your comments attacking the Auditor General in her report? and apologize 
for so egregiously mismanaging the smart meter program. Thank you. I didn't get quiet for you to carry on, and you are on very uh, thin ice right now. It's an old trick, but I was here before you. <laughs> Minister. Mr. Speaker, um, I have a quote here, Mr. Speaker. It says, I'm telling you, the smart meter program was a deal changer. The smart meter program is the best thing we've done in a decade. Mr. Speaker, that's from Anthony Haynes, President and CEO of Toronto Hydro. Mr. Speaker, again, Brian Bent, CEO of PowerStream, Aurora, Barry, Mark, and Vaughan, all communities within PowerStream's uh, responsibility. Ontario is seen as a world leader in smart meter implementation. PowerStream continues to be a strong supporter and advocate of the provincial government's smart meter initiative and recognizes it as being a key component to further developing Ontario's conservation and demand Order, programs, Mr. Speaker. Smart meters have been instrumental in enabling us to move forward with our conservation programs that are saving businesses and families hundreds of millions of dollars a year, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Wow. Minister, your failure to take responsibility for the smart meter fiasco shows how complacent and arrogant your government has become. This smart meter disaster is another billion dollar scandal. Your attacks on the AG are unprecedented. Your unwillingness to take responsible responsibility right here and now proves that you've held power for too long. Minister, will you do the ethical thing? Take responsibility for your actions and your failures. This smart meter mess, do the honorable thing and tender your resignation. Here, here. Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, I have a professional disagreement with the Auditor General. That's number one. Mr. Speaker, um, in terms of uh, disagreeing with, with an Auditor General, uh, the PC say that uh, disputing the Auditor General's findings is unprecedented. And it's a resigning issue, Mr. Speaker. They clearly don't remember former Public Safety and Security Minister Bob Brunseman calling an Auditor General report misleading and inaccurate. I would never use those terms, Mr. Speaker. We have a professional disagreement, and they should look at their own record before they start throwing stones. Thank you. I, uh, that's about the third time. So the member from Prince Edward Hastings is warned. And for those that don't remember, no more chances after that. The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. My question this morning is for the Premier. Good morning, Premier. Yesterday's Auditor General's report made clear that since 2005, the government has overpaid $8 billion of hard-earned taxpayers' money on P3 infrastructure projects. Six and a half billion of that wasted money came from the highest, the higher private sector borrowing costs that P3s incur. Speaker, earlier today, the Premier toured one of those P3 projects, the spur line of the Union Pearson Express project. Financing for that project was provided by some of Canada's largest and most profitable banks. How does this government justify picking the pockets of the Question. people of Ontario to fatten the profits of Canada's largest banks? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me begin by thanking the Auditor General for the recommendations that she did make with regard to Infrastructure Ontario. I have a letter from the Board of Infrastructure Ontario that was submitted to me yesterday saying that they will indeed look into and work with all of those recommendations. What I can say, though, Mr. Speaker, is that it's incorrect to suggest 
as the member suggesting that $8 billion has somehow been lost in these projects. The fact of the matter is you can't point to a cost without also including the benefit. The benefit, Mr. Speaker, and it's in the report, is $14 billion in savings as a result of costs, Mr. Speaker, that have been shifted to the private sector, which means, Mr. Speaker, when you, when you uh, analyze that with the costs, it's about $6.6 billion in net savings to, uh, to Ontarians, Mr. Speaker, as a result of the 74 uh, AFP projects that we presided. That's the full story, Mr. Speaker. That's what the thank member you. should be referring to. Supplementary. Speaker, thank you. The minister can try to spin this all he wants, but the auditor made it clear. Made it clear there was no solid evidence for going the privatization route on these 74 projects. In fact, her predecessor said the same thing in 2012 about the Union Pearson Express Sur line. He said very clearly that the numbers used to justify the P3 were basically made up. The government didn't listen then. It refuses to listen now. The government has already wasted $8 billion on public-private partnerships. How many more billions will the government waste before it listens to the advice of not one, but two Auditor Generals? Like, I know this member to be a sensible member of this legislature, so it sort of surprises me when he would throw out a cost without also referring to the benefit. So I refer him, Mr. Speaker, to page 203 of the report, Mr. Speaker, where it clearly outlines uh, where the, where, what the difference is between what he's saying and what the auditor has said. Leader of the Mr. Speaker, in the auditor report, it indicates on page 203 that there are $46.6 billion that have been spent under the traditional program. Member from Leeds, Mr. Speaker, under AFP, those costs are $40 billion, which is a saving of $6.6 billion. A saving is a saving, Mr. Speaker. You've got to include the benefits when you talk about the costs. It's that simple. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister responsible for Seniors Affairs. Recently, the Minister, along with some of my colleagues, attended the Ontario Senior Achievement Award speaker right here at Queen's Park, honouring 20 outstanding seniors who, after the age of 65, have made significant contributions to their communities. Mr. Speaker, seniors across Ontario have given a lifetime of service towards building this country, our province and their communities. They are a part of a proud history of giving back and are lifelong contributors both in their working life and now as volunteers. I was humbled and inspired by the remarkable achievements of all the recipients. Mr. Speaker, would the minister kindly please provide us with additional details regarding this wonderful event and program and how Ontario continues to recognize sure. and celebrate our seniors? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Minister responsible for seniors. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker, and thank the member from Burlington for the question. A good question, actually. Uh, speaker, celebrating our seniors is part of Ontario's commitment to build a successful, compassionate province where everyone has the opportunity to connect contribute and enjoy a high quality of life. We have celebrated the extensive contributions of Ontario Senior Speaker for the past 28 years with the Ontario Senior Achievement Awards, and each year we are reminded of just how much they have done for us. Speaker, along with the uh, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, the Honourable Elizabeth Doswell, and I had the uh, pleasure of, representing, of presenting 20 incredible seniors with this honour. Speaker, for every hour and every act of dedication these seniors have made, our quality of life improves, our community spirit Answer. grows, and our province is made stronger because of the extraordinary work that they do on our behalf. Speaker, thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the minister for his response. Speaker, I'm delighted to inform this legislature that an outstanding senior from my riding of Burlington, Mr. William K. Ferris, was celebrated at the ceremony. Indeed, indeed. Mr. Ferris has volunteered with the Canadian Red Cross for more than 20 years. He's taken on various leadership roles and assisted with deployments to the Mississippi and Manitoba floods, Northern Ontario forest fires, as well as Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Ike aftermaths in the United States. He's quite an exceptional person, as you can see. 
I was very humbled by the accomplishments of this incredible senior from my community, and I was pleased to recently congratulate him on receiving this important award. Mr. Speaker, could the minister please tell us more about the recipients that received this wonderful honour? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister. Uh, speaker, thank you. I have to thank the member for Burlington for her very strong advocacy and representation on behalf of the seniors in her community. Speaker, seniors over the age of 65 who qualify for this award have contributed in many different fields, including art, literature, community service, volunteers, education, environment, fitness, and humanitarian, and others. These exemplary senior speaker have taught others how to overcome late life depression. They have brought the gift of music to young and old alike. They have preserved beauty and nature in their communities for all to enjoy and so much more. Speaker, yeah, what are we? <laughs> Speaker, the awards they have received are uh, symbolic of how much we respect, honor, and admire them all. Yes, Speaker, sir. they represent a collective wisdom and compassion that have brightened the lives of many others and their accomplishments are an inspiration to us all. And we'll continue to the more fortunate speaker. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Economic Development. Minister, over the past three months, you've used baffle gab and gobbledygook in this House to deflect from your utter mismanagement and incompetence while taking taxpayers for a ride to Mars. Let's review your litany of malfeasance. You couldn't loan money to Mars, so you changed the law. Mars still couldn't lease the building to 80 per cent, so you broke the law. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the member to withdraw, and I would not advise him to say that other thing he, he just said. So withdraw, please. I withdraw. Okay. You couldn't. So you bended the law that you had just made. Mars got the loan but couldn't make the monthly payments. So you had another ministry make the interest payments for Mars. Question. Then you bailed out ARE to get back to square one. Minister, why should anyone in this province have any trust in you to turn this mess around? Employment and infrastructure. Well, Mr. Speaker, litany of personal insults aside, uh, I'm uh, pleased to respond to this uh, this question. And again, I, I want to thank the auditor for her coverage of of the Mars issue in, in the uh, Auditor General's report. She spent a great deal of time. Uh, rolling out the narrative on this from the very beginning, Mr. Speaker, right through to today, I think that's a valuable piece of work because what it does, Mr. Speaker, is it, 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 it indicates the challenges. It verifies that that building would have been left for one more winter in the ground, rotting in the ground, which would have created some great expense. And it indicates, Mr. Speaker, when and why the government had to step in to provide support to Mars. Now, I'm looking forward later today, Mr. Speaker, to getting together with our expert panel and announcing a positive step Answer. forward. I hope that the, minute the member wants to join us in putting this project onto solid footing. I suspect, Mr. Speaker, he Thank has you. alternative agendas. Thank you. Supplementary. Minister, I was at your press conference. You would, did not welcome the, minister, uh, the Auditor General's report whatsoever. Um, but let's also look at your terrible list of decisions as Cabinet Minister. First, you cancelled the gas plant and wasted a billion dollars. Yep. And your colleague took the fall for that mistake. You were caught using franking stickers that you weren't legally allowed to, so you let your staff member resign in disgrace. It's quite clear that you have an impeccable record at skirting your responsibility. And you know, and now you have the gall to question the Auditor General's numbers yesterday in a press conference, and that she got it wrong. Minister, I know that MARA stands for medical and uh, and re re research services, but I think it's more likely Order. to really mean the minister's Question. annual repeated screw-ups, and I'll be at the technical meeting today, and I'd like to see this little panel of experts. Thank you. I'm going to ask him to uh, taper his language. Minister. 
Well, Mr. Speaker, I would never respond by attacking the mem member's integrity, and his own party will do that for us, I, I suspect, because they, they tend to do that on a regular basis. And that's fine. What I will say, Mr. Speaker, is I am looking forward to the announcement we'll be making this afternoon. This project needs to be put on solid footing. We need to protect the taxpayer investment in this project, Mr. Speaker. The announcement we're going to make later today will do just that. We need to see this project, Mr. Speaker, be finished because that's going to create jobs, that's going to create economic growth, that's going to help build a stronger innovation climate in the City of Toronto and the province of Ontario. We're looking forward to making that announcement. I don't expect to have the member support on this. That member wanted this building to rot in the ground, Mr. Speaker. We're going to build it up. We're going to create jobs. Answer. We're going to create economic development. And, Mr. Speaker, we're going to finish that project. Thank you. Your question, the member from Kitchener, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. To the Premier. Yesterday, the Minister of Energy patronized the Auditor General by saying that the electricity system was too complicated for her to understand. It was patronizing, it was sexist, and today he said this about my life. Order, please. Order, please. Thank you. Please finish. And it was shocking yesterday. But today, he said this about the leader of our party. I won't take lessons from that woman. You said that in this House this morning. You didn't say not the leader of the party. You said not the member from Hamilton Centre. That woman. Will the Premier do the progressive thing and have her minister apologize for that kind of language in this House? Thank you. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, let's talk about the substance of the issue because I think what the uh, I think what the uh, party opposite is trying to do is to deflect from what we're really talking about because we're actually not talking about gender, Mr. Speaker. We're actually talking about a competent and a respected officer of this legislature yeah. who wrote a report that we have accepted, that we understand there are concerns, Mr. Speaker, that need to be addressed. We will continue to work with that professional officer of the legislature, Mr. Speaker. But what we also will do is we will point out where there are points of difference, Mr. Speaker. What our Minister of Energy has done is he has simply said we agree with much of what the Auditor General has said, but there are Answer. some points of disagreement, and we need to continue to work with her on those so that the people of Ontario will know exactly Thank what you. the programs we've put in place have accomplished, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, you're missing an opportunity to address the very issue that this House is facing around sexist behaviour. You're missing it right now. The Minister of Energy has attacked the auditor. He's on the record as doing so. Now he's using sexist, unparliamentary language to refer to our leader. I don't know what's going on in the minister's head, but he should be more respectful when it comes when when things come out of his mouth. Will the Premier fire? Minister for his behavior toward the auditor and toward the leader of this party, the member from Hamilton Centre. Do it right now. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you, Premier. Mr. Of Energy. Wow. Mr. Speaker, I have five adult daughters. Uh, they come over and have dinner with me at my house frequently. They're very, very interested in public policy issues and discussions, and we get involved in some very animated debate, the, the debates, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Sometimes they're fairly heated debates, but they're very respectful. I respect my daughters. I respect the Auditor General. We had a professional disagreement. Yeah. She came to my office. I met with her with my staff. We discussed some of the issues, and we explained our position to her, and we agreed to disagree, Mr. Speaker. That has nothing to do the with the allegations that are being made on yeah. the other side. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, when I'm dealing with people, I see with women, I see my daughters across the table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Be 
seated, please? Be seated. Thank you. Start the clock, please. Order, please. Order, please. The member from Timmins, James Bay, will come to order. Thank you. The uh, leader of the third party will come to order, please. Order. Minister of Labor will come to order. Thank you. New question. The member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to our incredible Minister of Education. Uh, Mr. Speaker, student well-being is one of our key priorities. My daughter and uh, tens of thousands of other young Ontarians are already benefiting from full-day kindergarten. But we know as children grow older, physical activity does more than improve health and well-being. It also builds confidence, leadership, productivity, and creativity. Research and science also shows that physical activity in school improves the student's concentration, attention span, and mood, ensuring they're prepared to learn. Providing more opportunities for children and youth to stay healthy and succeed in school supports our government's economic plan for Ontario as well. That's why I was so pleased to hear about the 60 Minutes of Physical Activity initiative that you and the Premier announced recently. Could you please elaborate on this announcement and how we'll get more children active throughout the day? Minister of Education. Thank you so much, and thank you to the uh, member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, and I wish his daughter well in school. But I was pleased to join the Premier and the Associate Minister of Health uh, last week, it seems like ages ago now, but just last week, to announce a partnership with Active at School and the Ontario Physical and Health Education Association, which we refer to as AFIA, to get children more active each and every day. Active at School will be working with Ontario and AFIA to provide kids with the opportunity to participate in 60 minutes of physical activity for kids connected to the school day in some way or another. Meeting this goal of 60 minutes of physical activity a day is part of our government's renewed Answer. focus on student well-being, including healthy eating, physical activity, a supportive and safe school climate, and mental Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, Minister, for your fulsome uh, response. Uh, student well-being is one of our key priorities. We know that when children and youth are physically active, they're healthier and better able to succeed in the classroom and beyond. Uh, my five-year-old daughter is already fascinated by the lure of electronics and video games. And my wife and I certainly don't want her and her friends just sitting on a couch uh, playing games. We want her and her friends to be healthy and active. So our goal as parents, and I know uh, your, your goal as minister, is to ensure that our children are getting at least an hour a day of physical activity by 2018. We're trying to give her that already now. Minister, can you please explain how the partnership between uh, AFEA and Active at School will help to meet Question. our goal of 60 minutes of physical activity a day? Thank you, Minister. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you know, uh, when I think about my grandchildren, they're really active. They spend a lot of time biking and skating and swimming, and they're really active. But that isn't true of all kids. We want to make sure that all kids are getting the physical activity that they need to, th to thrive. So when we think about this initiative, there's a number of ways in which we can reach that 60 minutes. It might be through an organized sport. It might be through extra curricular activities, it might be through the gym class, it might be through activities in the regular curriculum. It could be in what we call active transportation and encouraging kids to walk or bike to school. There are so many ways, Speaker, that we can do an, an excellent job Answer. of getting our children more active than they are today. Thank you. Thank you. 
Nice trip. Well, that's what you have. That's what you have to say in order for me to recognize you. The member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound on a point of order. Speaker, just wondering, in the spirit of transparency and accountability, if we could have unanimous consent for me to do my question. Agreed. Hey. The member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound is seeking unanimous consent to ask his question. Do we agree? Well, I. Uh, I, uh, I find this rather interesting announcement that I have to make that I'm going to remind everybody before we do the deferred vote not to run away because this is the opportunity that you've been presented with a collective photograph of the entire house it is immediately after the vote and immediately after that the women's parliamentary picture will be taken as well. We have a deferred vote. I, I, I think I've been pretty patient, but I'm getting heckled just to make an announcement. That's regrettable. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading of Bill 21, an act of safeguard health care integrity by enhancing the Voluntary Blood Donations Act 2014 and by amending certain statutes with respect to the regulations and pharmacies and other matters concerning regulated health professions. Please call in the members. This will be a five-minute bill.
All members, take your seats, please. Making a phone call. All members, take their seats, please. On December 9th, Mr. Bradley moved third reading of Bill 21. All those in favour, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Madame Mayor. Madame Mayor. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Duguid. Mr. Duguid. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Balkison. Mr. Balkison. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassen. Ms. Jassen. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Darmerla. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. 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 McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Mrs. Naidu Harris. Mrs. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mrs. Verniel. Mrs. Verniel. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Madame Jolinard. Madame Jolinard. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. The ayes are 93, the nays are zero. The ayes being 93 and the nays being zero, I declare the motion carried. Third reading of the bill, Troisième lecture, Projet de loi. Be it now resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. There are no further. How do we do this? Yeah. The, the, there, are no, there are no further deferred votes. This House stands recess until 3 p.m. this afternoon. Yeah.